Hello folks. Uh, so uh, I'm going to continue demoing some cool things that we can do with the dependency graph branch of Blender and that we'll all be able to do in the main branch once it's merged. So I've gone ahead and taken our previous setup um, with the smile shape and the uh, open shape and I've set up a couple of drivers to the rig. Um, this is actually Prug's original rig but I've just like changed how the drivers are working. So now I can uh, scale this bone to make the smile happen. Actually, you can scale it down to get the narrow shape. And um, I can take this um, jaw bone here and move it to get the open shape. So actually, that's driving the shape. It's not really um, deforming the mesh. So everything's working fine. Because the smarts for the smile and the open combining are on the mesh itself, I didn't have to do anything when I was driving it with the rig. But I've actually done a little magic thing as well. Um, if you notice this little thing that looks like a pimple on uh, Prue's lip, um, it's actually a little tweak control. Uh, so I can select it here and just tweak a little bit the shape of the outer lip. Um, and I just really quickly uh, made this as just a bone that is deforming um, the outer lip. And that doesn't look too special, right? But notice what happens when I open the mouth. It's actually perfectly tracking the surface of the skin and it's the very same skin that it's deforming so what the heck is going on here I mean you couldn't really do this in um, the main branch of blender you would have a dependency cycle and um, actually even the dependency graph it seems uh, kind of magically impossible um, so what really is happening here and how does this work um, well um, I've done a really sneaky thing behind the scenes. Um, I've taken Prug's mesh and I've made a linked duplicate of it. So if I uh, go to this uh, other layer, we have this um, wireframe here. And this linked duplicate, I removed all the modifiers from. So it doesn't have an armature modifier. Um, and you can see that happening, um, for instance, if I rotate the head. Sorry, yeah. You can see that Prug's head rotates, but his um, his main mesh does not rotate. His uh, fake mesh does not rotate. So um, there's no uh, deform on it, and if I move this bone, um, you can see that it only deforms um, the textured uh, version of the skin, but it doesn't actually move that cage. Um, so let's have a look and see what's happening behind the scenes here and how this is possible. Um, the main thing that's going on that's making it possible is that uh, this mesh here, even though it doesn't deform by the armature, actually does have the same shape keys. Because they're link duplicates, the same driver is working on both meshes. And this bone here is parented, uh, not directly, but it has uh, in the rig um, another bone. See this one here? There's the parent of this bone. And this bone here has a child of constraint to the copy of Prug's rig, but it's actually parented to a vertex group. So there's a small vertex group on this face called locator, and it just follows it around. And so that bone is the parent of this one. And so when that moves, it moves with it. And then this guy is still free to be moved uh, independently. And then the final trick is that in our rig here, um, there's the real uh, deformer. This is actually what is deforming the skin, believe it or not. And it has a local copy location to the control. Uh, that means that when the control moves, as a result of the uh, parent moving. Um, let me make this full screen so we can see better. Um, there's no effect on the child. So, so you can see the child isn't moving at all. Um, but when I actually click on the control itself and move it, the deformer moves with it. And so that's basically 
the hack. So this guy is deforming the skin, this guy is moving this guy, and this guy is parented to the hidden mesh. And we just hide everything. Um, here we go. It looks uh, nice and magical again. So that's basically um, the upshot of this little hack. So um, this is kind of a, a nutty setup, and like I am uh, sure that things are going to get refined a bit more before the end of the benzene drive cycle, but I just wanted to show that you could do some wild things, even if you're still just working with meshes and armatures, um, and not even trying to like drive from any of the other new cool stuff um, using the new dependency graph. And um, these setups um, are very common in other software, so I don't see why we shouldn't have them in Blender as well. Till next time, bye bye.